inspiration behind World House is the Idea Lab vision that we can use technology and innovation to drastically reduce the price of a house to families in the developing world. We wanted to see where did the other prefab housing ventures go wrong. And what we saw was that the price was so out of whack because of distribution costs. So what we did was we looked at it and said, can we design a house that is stackable so that its shipping volume is far smaller than that of its end use? And if we can do that, if we can fit three, four, five hundred houses into a shipping container, we can make a huge impact, not only in reducing the price, but we can get volume to a space if they need it. How, I'm surprised that a house can be under $1,000. How were you able to get the price under $1,000? Uh, we have two things that I would say allow us to get the price under $1,000. The first thing is labor. So because it's a kit house, we utilize local labor to put the house together. So instead of spending thousands of dollars on American or European engineers assembling the house, we are able to utilize local masons and even the family of the, the people who's going to live in the house themselves to put the house together. The second is what we're looking to do is develop a frame of a house. We provide the solar electricity. We provide the fans. We provide the intelligent frame of the house and the flooring. But if you want to extend the house, you want to build, build in more shelves, you want to customize it, you can do it that way. And that's another way that we can really bring down the cost of the house is using those local materials. You traveled to India in order to find out what people wanted from a home. What, what, did, what did people need? What do people want? What I learned about what people wanted in a house is very different than what I thought. When you're in America, you hear a lot of stories of people really want electricity. They really want sanitation. There are things that are negatively impacting their life. And that's definitely the case. But when you go in and actually meet with real families, their number one priority is, is safety and security. They really want a house that's going to provide them shelter against the sun. And when I would go to India with prototypes of our product, they would look at it and they would say, come here, build the house. Let's see how it stands up in the monsoon. Let's see how it stands up in the heat. Safety and security is definitely a very large priority. A lot of families really, really suffer from lack of electricity, especially in terms of their children's education. The only real way to bridge that in a lot of parts of the world is solar energy. So we wanted to integrate solar electricity into the house. We wanted to give people not only light at night, but we wanted to use the solar electricity to power solar cooling fans. And the last one that we really looked at when I looked at people's priorities, especially when we talked to a lot of mothers, it was a clean burning cook stove. Part of the World House vision is what can we synthesize? What are good things that are already out there? What can we synthesize into this house to make people's lives better? We don't have to invent a new cook stove. We don't have to invent new solar panels. Let's put them together in a kit that can achieve two or three key goals in human development at the same time and make it affordable. We've done a lot of stories with, with tiny homes and, and sort of seeing just how much space people need to live. What size do you think is enough for somebody, for a family? There was no exact number from family to family. What I generally saw was that houses under 100 square feet that had more than five inhabitants had a few people living outside. We would like to give as much space as possible for the price. So that's why we're starting with an extensible home that can be extended over time. So our base model we're looking at right now is going to be somewhere between 120 and 150 square feet. And from our research, we think that can fit five people pretty comfortably. I want to ask you about your choice not to look at natural materials or earth building because I think that's a big thing that people in the sustainability movement talk a lot about right. going back to that actually in the U.S. One of the issues we face in using natural materials and I'll, I'll use the examples of bamboo housing and earth housing is while these are great from an environmental perspective a lot of initiatives that we've seen that utilize these materials especially in India which is one of our initial target markets is that it fails in the aspirational standpoint, which means a lot of people love the idea of bamboo, they love the idea of earth houses, but it's not something that they want to pay for to live in, it's not their dream house. We've yet to find a natural material that when we go to villagers and we say, how about a house made out of this, it's something that they're actively willing to pay for. 
And that's one of the key building blocks of World House and one of the key areas we're going into is we want something that people are going to want to pay for and want to finance. And if we're setting up a house that can be rented for $20 a month or paid off to a regional rural bank at $20 a month, we need that person to actively want to be in that house, to move his, his or her family into that house. 